there's so many things going on around us, and it just reminds me uh, that my little petty things really don't matter in the big scope of life. Can I tell you, your petty things don't matter in the big scope of life. So many times we get so caught up in, in little things that they really don't mean a hill of beans. They may mean something to us, but we take a step back and, and realize that life is just a breath. As Peter said, we are just sojourners passing through in this land um, here on earth. Life is a short span. And so one of the things that has been that one of the items, areas that I've been reflecting on a lot this year is what matters, what really matters at the end of the day. I, I couldn't help but remember uh, I was with my family yesterday afternoon and my nephew has uh, has his hair long now and it, it, he has to always do this. And we were laughing about it because my brother Michael always had bangs. Uh, he just loved his bangs and loved his long hair. And my dad would come unglued over his hair. Uh, and every time he'd shake his head, dad would just come unglued. And, and I'm not faulting my dad, but, but I think sometimes my dad majored on the minors uh, in those kinds of things, perhaps that generation, I don't know. But I learned from that, and I thought, you know what, with my kids, I'm going to save my ammunition for those things that matter, those things that, uh, that really matter at the end of the day. And I just call us all as believers to really reflect on what it is that really matters, not our preferences, not our um, idiosyncrasies, et cetera. I, the older I get, the more peculiar I'm getting. My wife will tell you that. She'll say amen to that. And if I'm not careful, I just nitpick on the little things. It really don't matter a hill of beans. And so um, take some time to focus and reflect on, on what really matters, what, what, what's on the heart of God. That's what I want to know. God, God, what's on your heart? Um, what are your concerns? Um, yesterday, we had to reschedule a baptism that we had scheduled for the day. And I was just thanking the Lord. Uh, we rescheduled it to the 31st of January. Uh, but I was just thanking the Lord that, that, boy, in the midst of this crisis that we all see, people are hungry to know the answers to life. Um, to know God. They may not realize they're hungry to know God, but they are. Deep down, man recognizes that, that his span on this earth is very short, and uh, they start looking at things that matter. Folks, can I tell you, the only thing that matters is that they come into a relationship with Jesus Christ, because that's an eternal matter. And so at the end of today, just like I do every day, we're going to pray and ask God to give us an opportunity to plant a seed, to cultivate a seed, and, and, and if God would will that we'd be able to participate. And I want to have, have you ask yourself a question. And this is not to point fingers or give any kind of guilt to anybody, but when's the last time that you intentionally went to share the gospel with somebody? Um, God's concern is that his church, his bride, his plan is that the world would come to know him through his son, Jesus Christ. And his plan is, is that he has called us to be ambassadors, to be messengers of that. And so it's, it's growing in my heart more and more the need um, to, to um, turn my eyes and my heart away from those things that are self-serving and to get on board with what God's plan is, to evangelize, to bring those to Christ. And I would say the first place you need to start is praying, asking God to give you opportunity, asking God to give you unction, asking God even to change your heart. Maybe if you recognize from my saying this, that, that your concern hasn't been for the lost. Um, acknowledge that to God and repent. A turn, have a change of mind. Allow the Holy Spirit to mold and shape your heart that that, that, that you'd have a desire to see others to come to know Christ. I don't know when Jesus is going to return. He doesn't even know, not until the Father tells him. But signs certainly look like it. Um, I, I don't know. I'm not going to be a predictor. God forbid that I would be. That's a presumption on God. Um, but I do know this, that Jesus is going to return. And when he returns, it's going to be too late. And so the urgency is today that that we would be faithful in being witnesses of the gospel of Jesus Christ, not witnesses of a gospel of a of a of a 
clean life or how to have a good life or how to be good. None of us can be good apart from a transformed heart and the work of the Holy Spirit. And so let's turn our focus to, to that. I challenge you with that question, and only you have to answer this to yourself. When's the last time that you intentionally took a step to be what we're called to be, and that's to be evangelist? He's called every one of us. I know there's the gift of evangelism, and I've met those who have that gift and been with those, and my goodness, it's incredible. But every single one of us as believers, Paul tells us we're ambassadors of Christ uh, to a world. We represent him to the world. And so he has called every one of us to be an evangelist. And take that step. Begin praying for a person that you know that is unsaved that's lost, and let's begin to turn our focus and on our, our hearts on leading the unsaved to a relationship to Jesus Christ. And so, anyway, that's just on my heart. That's not what I intended to say this morning. We're going to look at Proverbs, um, and maybe because of time, we'll see if we have time at the end to, uh, to get to a song that was on my heart that I just wanted to express to the Lord this morning. But Proverbs chapter 2, as Solomon uh, concludes this chapter in, in the thought that he is, has on his mind uh, as he's writing, again, these principles, precepts that we can live by. Earlier in the chapter, he had, he had given one indication, one thing that, that the Lord would protect us from, uh, generally would protect us from, if we uh, apply, know, and understand the truth and the wisdom of God's word. He says early in the chapter, just to just to ref, just to reflect on this, that uh, when when we adhere to, we take to heart, we incline our hearts to God's truth and His wisdom. He'll guard our paths, the path of justice, and He'll watch over the way of His saints. The second thing he concludes in this chapter that if we apply the wisdom of God, there's another thing that he will guard us from, and that is getting sucked up or getting drawn along with those who are unrighteous. And we all have to recognize that we can all be led away or weakened by those who are unrighteous um, if we make our bed with them, so to speak, if we partner with them. And so he, he uses this language in verse 16. He says, so you will be delivered from the forbidden woman. Some of your translations say, may say the adulterous woman. From the adulteress uh, with her smooth words who forsake the companion of her youth and forgets the covenant of her God. For her house sinks down to death and her paths on the departed. None who go to her come back nor do they regain the paths of life. And we have to see a little bit of context of what Solomon's writing this out of. Um, God will protect us from going with the, with the forbidden woman or the adulteress. In that day, God had forbid his children, the children of Israel, from intermarrying with women of other nations. And, and we're not talking about ethnicities, but we're talking about other nations who had other gods rather than Yahweh, God, the true God of Israel. And so the reason God had forbidden that was because when, when the men of Israel or the women of Israel intermarried with those other nations, what would happen, and we see it throughout the scriptures, is they would take on the gods of those other nations, gods who were not the true God. Gods who were who were wicked, God, the God of Baal, the God of Moab, all of these other wicked entities that uh, the other nations were in an idolatrous relationship with. And so uh, here Solomon says, listen, if you apply the wisdom of God, God will keep you from going to the way of the adulterous woman. The principle for us to apply in our lives today is that if we apply the wisdom of God, if we walk in the truth of the Word of God, it will be a protection for us. Why? Because we have wisdom, we have knowledge, and we have understanding. It will be a protection for us from not getting drawn into 
a yoked relationship with those who are worshiping other gods other than the true God. We're all familiar with, with when Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse 14, that, that we are not to be unequally yoked. And here in context, Paul is talking about marriage, that the believer is not to be unequally yoked with a non-believer, to come into marriage relationship with a non-believer. And you have to picture in your mind what this means to be unequally yoked. It's, it's, that, it's that picture of two ox that would be yoked to a plow. One of the ox is stronger than the other ox. And if you're trying to plow a field with those two ox, the stronger ox will, will have greater strength than the smaller or the weaker ox. And as a result, the team will get twisted and turned. And it'll be, it'll be hard to, to row a straight furrow in order to plant the seed. And so, but we can take this principle, again, Solomon's given principles, general principles in life. And we can take that principle and we can apply it to so many different areas of our life. Um, Paul also said in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, somewhere in there, that, that we're not to be deceived, that bad company corrupts good morals. And we're not talking about um, the area of, of engaging in relationship with the unlost. My goodness, we have to engage in relationship with the, with the unsaved so that we might share the gospel with them. But there's a difference in engaging in friendship and relationship as to being yoked with that unbeliever. And it's a principle in the believer's life. You can be assured that when we are unequally yoked with unbelievers, um, and again, I, you know, I, I don't want us to get the idea that we're to have nothing to do with those who are lost. We have to love. We have to engage those that are lost to share the gospel with. But when we, and, and I don't mean this in a vulgar sense, but when we make our bed, when we make bed partners with those that are, that are unequally yoked, it will have a negative impact on our walk with Christ. I love the illustration that I uh, read C.H. Spurgeon, the old Baptist preacher, once had a young lady come to him and tell him that uh, she was wanting to marry this man who was an unbeliever. And C.H. Spurgeon had warned her of that. And to illustrate what the consequence would be, he asked the young lady to stand on a chair. And if you've ever seen pictures of C.H. Spurgeon, he was a big man. He was a robust man, about the size of Zach, uh, our worship pastor. And the C.H. Spurgeon asked the young lady who was standing on the chair to pull him up to where she was. And she said, I can't do this. He said, no, try. Pull, try to pull me up on the chair where you're standing. And so she grabbed his hand and she began to try to pull. And it was right. There was no way she was going to pull him up. And with just a little flick of his wrist, he pulled the young lady's arms and she toppled down on the ground and hit the ground. And she jumps up. She was so angry. She was enraged. How dare you pull me down? And C.H. Spurgeon said, it's much easier for me to pull you down where I am than it is for me to pull you to pull me up where you are. And so the principle that Solomon is giving to us here is that if we take the word of God to heart, not our opinions, not our likes, not our dislikes, not our preferences and camp on those. If we take the word of God at heart and we apply them in our hearts and, and we have a heart to walk in those, it will be a guard for us from getting sucked in and drawn in by the world. Jesus said that, that we're not to be of this world, but we are in this world. And it's God's purpose that we be salt and light in this world. And if, and if we get in bed with those that are, are systems even, of, of worldly systems, then we're going to get drawn in. And that applies to every area of our life, whether it's business, whether it's education, whether it's a marriage relationship, uh, whether it's politics, um, I, I, we can get drawn in. And before we know it, we have compromised our witness. We have 
compromised our convictions and our fellowship with the Lord will 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 grow further and further apart from him. And so he concludes this in chapter 2 by saying this, So you will walk in the way of the good, and you'll keep the paths of the righteous. For the upright will inherit the land, and those with integrity will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the land, and the treacherous will be rooted out. Two things in closing. I'm going to pray for us, and I'm going to ask the Lord to move our hearts to share Christ. And number two, I'm going to ask the Lord to examine us and see if there be any way in our lives that, that we've been drawn in and that we might recognize it and, and turn from that, have a, have a change of mind, a repentance, and that we would resolve today to walk in the precepts of the Word. Father, we love you. We thank you so much for your goodness and grace. God, I pray that you'd move our hearts. God, stir in my heart today, God. Make me keenly aware of those that I come into contact with and Lord, those that I discern that do not have a relationship with you, Christ. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would give me the courage to plant a seed in their hearts of the gospel, Lord. God, if seeds have already been planted there, God, I pray that you'd, you'd give me words to say that would help cultivate the seed of the Word of God that's planted in their hearts. And God, if you give me an opportunity to, to witness somebody coming to know you, Lord Jesus, boy, I'd love to see that today. And so, God, I pray you'd use me as you see fit. God, make us vessels that are that are separated from the from the influence, from the from the bearing down on the God, we need you so much. God, we are so fickle. We're so fleshly driven that it's so easy to get sucked up in the ways of the world. Holy Spirit, protect us. May your word keep us on the path of the righteous, as Solomon says here. Lord, we love you. We bless you. We praise your name. I love you. I pray God's blessings on you today. I pray that uh, his face would shine upon you to recognize his graces. Uh, walk with him today and be a blessing to anybody that you come in contact with. Have a great day.